If you had 11 years to develop a new Wrangler, you'd certainly hope the result had better off-road ability, fuel efficiency, power, tech refinement, and also lose a few kilos. The new JL is a lot safer too, thankfully, but given it's the most comprehensive redesign in its 77 year evolution, with incredible attention to preserving its core values, it's an impressive list. And to really show it off, Jeep's chosen the iconic Rubicon Trail in the US to whet our appetites before the new Wrangler arrives in Australia early next year. We're admittedly covering the slightly easier end, but we're doing it in each direction, which includes doing the infamous Cadillac Hill and is certainly still hardcore. Back to the car, the new Wrangler may look like a slightly updated version of the old JK it replaces, but it's actually all new from the ground up, and its carefully managed look is loaded with cool design details that somehow make it better at being a Wrangler, as well as ticking all the important safety and convenience boxes we expect in a new car. We've already given you the full rundown from its global reveal in LA late last year, but check out the full written review for more details and what specs we expect to see in Australia. Unlike pretty much every other new car we can think of, the new Wrangler retains the classic Jeep ability to unbolt the doors and also you can fold down the windscreen, but you want to be doing it on private property in Australia. Another design highlight is the Wrangler's interior, which retains a classic Jeep ruggedness, but brings a bunch of good quality adventure themed textures like this rubberized surround here and knobs, even the start button's rubberized, but it also includes every important mod con uh, with the multimedia system, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality, um, all the important connections, and even the three and a half mil USB points are covered by this O-ringed flap. The back seat of the four-door is also a decent place to be, with heaps of room for my 172 centimetres of height. Plus, unlike a lot of SUVs, it's got directional air vents here and USB connections there and even a inverter just down there. Um, you'll also find two Isofix child seat mounts either side of the back. Uh, it's a three-seater back here, so five in total. And the short wheelbase two-door is only a four-seater and a bit more cramped, but still decent considering it's only a tiny wheelbase. Now the boot of the four-door is pretty conventional Wrangler with the sides opening tailgate with a full-size spare on the back, lift up glass hatch. Uh, this one's fitted with the optional dog kennel from Mopar but uh, the cargo space has got decent length, plenty of room for a couple of really big eskies and yeah just a pretty handy square space. It's fair to say that crawling along in low range over rocks is the Wrangler's natural environment. And that's why they've stuck with solid axles front and rear and coil springs all round to maximise suspension articulation. The Rubicon V6 is where driving are beefed up over the regular Wranglers with extra suspension travel, stronger front and rear axles with diff locks and sway bar disconnects, and they make this stuff pretty easy. You just choose where to put your wheels, keep a steady throttle, and it'll walk over stuff you'd struggle to climb over with two legs. A few of the ones we're driving are fitted with the optional Fox 2-inch suspension lift and 35-inch mud terrain tyres, and they're a clear cut above the rest, but even the standard car is so well protected for grinding over things and not tearing itself apart. The other big surprise is just how nimble and capable the four-door is, given it rides on a much longer wheelbase than the two-door. All this off-road ability must bring a degree of compromise to the on-road performance. And with the Wrangler, the most telling element is the amount of chatter and feedback you get through the steering wheel over bumps. You simply cannot expect it to handle on-road bumps as well as it would if it had an independent front suspension. That said, the whole package is so much more refined than the JK Wrangler it replaces. And it's about on par with a high-spec dual cab ute, which we all know Australia loves. The new Wrangler is an amazing achievement in this modern world full of competition and regulations that's forcing most of the car world to become homogenous. It stays true to its roots and it does so better than ever before while still giving us the safety and all the convenience items we all want. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to stay on top of all our videos and you can find a lot more on the new JL Wrangler at carsguide.com.au